Hey guys, it's Andy from WebCrunch. This video is about uh, working with constraints in Affinity Designer. Um, it's a new feature that kind of, I think it was released in version 1.5, I think is what's out now. Um, essentially what it does is makes, makes your design scale um, based on this configuration using this UI here. Um, it's a neat feature because with a lot of designers who don't necessarily want to code prototypes um, or can't, um, this can kind of show a developer or someone who can code um, the look of something at a given state or a given width to, based on the devices uh, available, which, as you know, there's so many out there. So uh, it's a cool tool. I'll walk you through just the general uh, basics of it to kind of give you a, a grasp of it. But um, this, I mean, you can use it to your heart's content because it's it's based on a con like a container in a child. So if you think of a layer format, if you're used to that, say in Photoshop or something, um, each parent can be um, have a, a sub child, I would say. Um, so with that in mind, you can adjust the child's parameters with the constraints here, and then the parent can scale. So we'll get into more detail here in a second, but I just wanted to kind of give you a, a worded way to go about this so in my example here it's very hashed together nothing you know eye-catching here but just a, a way to show um, by example so we're working with say an iPad um, and iPhone mock-up what I want to do is transcend this design to the iPhone but I want it to be to where basically they are in sync in terms of scalability so to do that we use constraints and to get started, I'll touch on the header, which is in its own group. As you can see, the header is grouped, the contents grouped, and the footer is grouped in my affinity file. Um, what I want to do to start is uh, grab the elements within the header itself and constraint them to their um, relative corners. So to do that, you actually, um, well, to start, the element itself represents this box here and at its current state it'll scale you know on its own proportionally since it's vector in this case um to to get that to turn off basically and keep its proportion you turn these off and then to affix it to the left top you would do this so grabbing the entire group which is now labeled constraints group you'll notice it stays where it's at, but the menu icon over on the right is skewed. So to fix that, we'll do the same to the menu icon and turn these off, grab these, turn them on. And now it scales. Super useful. So if you wanted to copy that over to our iPhone design, throw it in place. Oops, grab the wrong thing. Hang on. There we go. So now we have our scalable menu all ready to go. Um, Let's, let's move down the page. I'm going to work on the footer next. Um, it's got kind of some instru interesting elements that we need to kind of pay attention to. Um, so you can go deep with constraints. So if I wanted the button or something to scale but not the form field, we could do that. Do that on your own time. I'm not going to mess with it now because this video is, I'm just looking for it to be short. But essentially to get something to scale but keep its proportion, turn these off. And to make things easier on yourself, put everything in a group, which is the parent container, which is the thing you're gonna scale in this case. It doesn't really need to be touched yet. I'll get into where maybe we might deal with that with this image later. Um, but going further on the footer, we need to make the form, um, make sure it scales proportionally as you rescale. So there it is, that's pretty cool. Now I need to do the same with our web crunch logo. You'll turn that off. Do that. 
and try it once more and there it goes now you can go deeper in this and make things like um, if you scaled the footer to the height see how it, things change like that the the form would stay at the bottom i don't necessarily plan on doing that with this design so i'm going to turn that back off but your design might you know require that kind of feature so um, those things are pretty neat you can just affix them based on their uh, current locale so again if i scale this the well let me do the form again to give you a better perspective i'll just do the bottom and the footer or the logo top so if i scale the footer itself the logo stays fixated on the top and based on the container and the foot and the form stays on the bottom. So that's pretty cool. Um, so why don't we, I'm going to turn those back off for now, I think. And I'll copy this over to our iPhone design here. So I can just scale this and it should land in the center. Cool. Now I would never probably have this big of a footer on a mobile screen. I probably wouldn't even have it on the mobile screen on the initial mock-up, but you can, if, to mean to make things easier, you can make the entire canvas bigger like that, just for grins. So going further, we have our content here. Um, the text itself should scale. I think you can keep it. Yeah, you can keep it. What, what you might want to do is just to fix it to where it's currently. If this entire content container scaled, it stays the same like so. And so when you scale, it does something like this. It stays proportion. Let me let me double check that. I think we want to do this but keep these on. <laughs> yeah, so it does that kind of business, which is cool. But when it scales, you kind of want it to align to the top. So I think to do that, you would do this number gone. So when you scale the group, I believe, yeah, it'll scale like maybe it would on your phone. Cool. Yeah, so there's at least that. Okay, so then we can copy this over to our iPhone mock up. Let's scale the whole thing. And then I'll just move our text up. Not perfect, but you get the idea. From having to recreate that completely, I mean, it's. I'm not that lazy of a designer, I don't think, to have to do that. It's not a big deal. But the whole thing is scaling a bit. I think I have it set up that way. So, there we have it. So that's essentially constraints. Um, again, you can go deeper. You can have, if you make a new group um, within a constraint group, you can constrain things inside that. So it's really powerful if you get deep with a design um, my only concern is if you maybe misconfigure something and you spend, you know, many minutes just trying to figure out why something isn't scaling the right way, like I was doing with the text for a minute, um, it can kind of get cumbersome, I guess. And at that point for me, uh, the software gets in the way of actual creativeness, which is not a good thing, but. I would say use it use it sparingly. Use it on elements you know are just going to scale and kind of stay put, like a header or a footer element. But as far as content goes, maybe maybe keep that you know more um, original. So there we have it. I uh, hope you dig constraints. Um, I hope maybe to promote uh, a bit more of Affinity stuff soon. Um, you should see some new features coming out. And just kind of why I chose it over maybe Sketch or Photoshop or Illustrator even. So I look forward to it. Thanks, guys.